Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. Hi, everybody. This is the Market Update. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when new videos or live streams are coming out. And of course, if you like the content, please drop a like. Our goal is to get one day to a thousand likes on a stream or a video. Yesterday was the first day, right, this year that I have not done the market update live stream. So I had a full day here at the consensus conference in Austin, Texas to like breathe, take stock, you know, test out my theory about what happens if the market could go lower. And I've got some alpha to deliver about that as well as a whole new perspective. So let's start with that. All throughout this week, there's been all kinds of FUD released. You know, a regulatory framework given the CFTC, you know, leeway if they don't like your tokenomics. You know, BNB being investigated as a security, right? And then there's macro stuff, right? Like interest rates are spiraling higher, higher you know, the Bank of Japan is trying to save their bond market. They're printing the yen, right? Causing the dollar to go higher. And all this stuff is going on. But crypto isn't moving. So you have to ask yourself, hey, is the bad news priced in? One. Two. Is this the dawn of crypto as the money we've needed? In other words, is this the beginning of the end of the legacy system, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, the Fed can't stop inflation, right? You know, we paid like $29 for tacos and a pineapple shake yesterday, right, here in Austin, right? Inflation just feels like it can't be stopped. The Federal Reserve can raise rates 10 times over the next year, all right. And what's that going to do other than really hurt real estate investors? So the Fed would have to basically crash everything. All right. Now, on paper, on charts, that sounds, that sounds theoretically possible, but is it likely? Or is it more likely that they're just going to have to let the inflation run its course until the inflation itself creates demand destruction? Meanwhile, meanwhile, crypto hedge funds may get liquidated because they're overweight altcoins or maybe NFTs. But does that necessarily mean Bitcoin and Ethereum have to go down? If Bitcoin and Ethereum are the future of money or the future of money and technology, while central banks, right, slowly watch the legacy Titanic sink into the ocean, I think it's time to look at the counter argument. I think it's time to look at the bullish argument rather than just pound the table on the bearish argument. Now, if you want to hear the bearish argument, you can watch any video that I've presented, say, in the last week. But what I haven't done as an analyst and I thought about on my day off was, hey, man, what about the bullish argument. What about the argument that, you know, it's over? So let's talk about that. So one of the things at Wall Street that, you know, institutional sales forces used to do. So the bond trading desk used to have a sales force, the currency trading desk, the stock trading desk, the options trading desk, they would all have sales forces and their job would be twofold. One, obviously to bring in orders to generate commissions, deal flow, et cetera. 
but they would also serve as the human recon team, right? The people who would do like the proverbial fear greed index as a human to human survey, almost taking the temperature of the market. Okay. So if every salesperson's client was bearish, the trading desk might be inclined to be bullish. Or if everybody's big clients were inclined to sell or buy, trading desks might note of what I guess you would call the legacy whales were doing. All right. So in other words, sentiment was gauged on like a one-to-one -one basis. So here at Consensus, I have found a consensus in that everyone is sort of spooked by the price action and everybody thinks it has to go lower in order for crypto to make a bottom. Now, as we have noted, right, that's not an unreasonable assumption. People think that if crypto hedge funds are failing, that any rally in the market will be fleeting. Okay. I can't argue with that either, but there's almost no traction on any idea that this market could snap and wind up with a mass liquidation event, which I'm likening to 1929. Like it has gotten to the point where people are listening to the 1929 story but they just sort of stare back at me. It's like deer in the headlights. And I, I go back to where I'm staying and I go, did I, did I just connect with those people or did I just scare the shit out of them for sport? Not for sport, but did I just scare everybody? So am I predicting the market? Am I working off sound analysis with that stuff? Yeah, but <clears throat> It, have I forgotten that crypto is the future? Probably. Probably, right? In other words, you get so caught up in charts that you're missing the message that everyone's telling you, which is that no one wants to buy. Nobody wants to look at their portfolio. An Uber driver in Austin who knows we're all here for crypto, he's like, dude, I just can't look at my wallet. People have stopped checking their portfolios. And I, I get this sense from looking out at the crowds, uh, at the two things I spoke at, that no one gives a shit. No one cares, right? People are just like, okay, you know, some people are, are like here to learn and some people are interested, but the lack of enthusiasm and boredom is palpable. Now, of course, I haven't been over to the main consensus stage yet, but the human to human story here is that no one is interested in the market right? No one thinks it can bottom. Now that may be true for certain altcoins, right? But if big players believe the legacy ship is sinking, then 30K Bitcoin and 17K Ethereum, I don't know, it may seem attractive. Now as the yen plummets, people are also and I've learned, this is another thing I've learned, that as the yen plummets, it's paying big hedge funds to borrow yen at low interest rates, sell the yen in the foreign exchange market for dollars, and then go shopping for dollar assets. So that's why stonks are up, right? Because everyone's like, okay, well, stonks are oversold. Now, I don't know if that's the right trade or not, but to conclude the, the little speech, you have to ask yourself, is some of that money going to wind up in high quality cryptos? Right? Right. And I also noticed that, you know, the ETH merge story is popping up. Chainlink's offering staking, right? Reserve rights and some of this stuff that, you know, was from DeFi 1.0 is showing up as, you know, interesting news items. So yes, there's a bearish narrative. We know what that is. We know what happens if the market snaps. And I have told you probably <clears throat> too, too many times. So let's talk about something else. Let's just talk about something else, right? What's wrong with the other side of the argument? Okay. 
So let's go to your market update. All right, and what we're gonna do today on the market update is something totally different. So I make this joke sometimes on the show where I say, you know what? I just presented 20 slides that point one way. And sometimes there's one slide that points the other way. And a lot of times, or not a lot of times, but some of the time when it's not up only or down only, that one chart is the chart that you should pay attention to that winds up actually forecasting what's next. All right. So this is <clears throat> the case to mellow out. Is it a change in a prediction? I don't even know if you can change, if there is a prediction to be made with how quiet this all is, but let's just go with the case to mellow out. All right. So here's dollar yen. Dollar up, crypto down. Let's keep it simple, right? So dollar yen has gone up. It can go up. It can go up more. Okay. And frankly, dollar yen can just keep going up as the yen plummets and everybody looks to the dollar. Okay. So the dollar versus the yen. So a dollar buys 133 yen as of now, right? It could buy 136 yen as the yen gets cheaper. And it's probably going right to 150. But the thing that's funny is crypto isn't going down. So there's all this bad news, rates up, dollar up, crypto isn't moving. Okay, now let's let's find some evidence on crypto charts. Is, is there any evidence to indicate that, you know, there's support or there has to be a rally before there's any more declines? In other words, we have to test the, the instead of the bears leaning on the bulls, it may be time for the bulls to lean on the bears, right? We can't assume the bulls are dead, right? Especially if people wake up one day with the feeling like, oh shit, I missed the bottom, right? So 1700 is support in ETH on the uh, ETH weekly chart. <clears throat> and you've had a couple of big dojis so far for last week and so far for this week. Now, I know we got the inflation number coming up, right? Right. I know we got that coming up. There is a lot of stuff going on where, you know, there's all this bad news, yet ETH is holding. Now, if you go to the next slide on the PowerPoint, okay, there's a 13 bottom in ETH, the DeMarc 13 signal. Normally, that signal means you have to be cognizant of the end of a trend. It doesn't guarantee a bottom, right? But it should give you pause, right? In other words, if the inflation number comes out, right? And the bad news is out, can the market try to go up? Or is this steady range, the new going up? All right. We'll, we'll find out. But I think as an analyst, I'd be remiss if I ignored a 13 bottom on the daily chart, right? when it's on support on the weekly chart. Bitcoin on the weekly chart is working on a DeMarc nine bottom. Now these things are tricky. What's a nine bottom? Well, it could be the end of a trend if it's in a range or an end of a move if it's in a range, or it can be, you know, the first part of a trend. So one through nine, right? Counts a certain set of conditions counter trend bounce or range, and then it resumes. So as I've said in all these other videos, right? If it resumes, we know what's going to happen, right? It's a vanishing act, right? But that idea of crypto's vanishing act is getting around YouTube. <clears throat> it's got people scared at consensus. And I'm just asking, it's just a question. Like, I know you're here for the hard prediction, but I think one of the things you have to do now that you've hopefully protected your portfolio is ask, you know, can this thing go up? Is Bitcoin safe or at a very simple level, is there going to be a rally that allows me to get out of certain positions or even get short, right? In other words, if the path is lower, is it straight down? because of the inflation number. And if it isn't, what does the market do, right? 
Do these guys who have been accumulating Bitcoin at 30,000, like, you know, maybe Sailor and some of these other big guys have been taking the capitulation of crypto hedge funds, right? Or is there going to be something about the ETH merge where, I don't know, it winds up going lower. But at the moment, it's on support. Like, I just need to acknowledge that. I just need to say, okay, it's on support. Now, when you look at like the DeMarc Elliott wave in Bitcoin, right? It looks like we're obviously in corrective mode, right? Nothing's freaking happening, right? There was an A wave up, right? A B wave down. And as I've hinted at throughout prior streams, there could be a C wave up, right? I mean, this has nothing to do with my view or any research about a big crash or even anybody's fear of being long here at consensus, right? So if, the, if crypto has temporarily changed hands from liquidated cryptos, hedge funds, to whales who think that they can hodl this long term and are encouraged by the distress in legacy, then 34 or 35K may not be unreasonable. I mean, again, it's just the other side of the view. Sometimes what you have to do with people is you have to give them one side of the angle or one side of a view, and you have to give them the other side. Now you're like, Bill, I need you to tell me what to do. Okay. <clears throat> I'll tell you what to do. If you don't have firm conviction, don't do anything because that's what that's that's what seems like everyone else is doing. But if the market starts to turn up, they could squeeze out some shorts. They could make people who were bearish and thought it was going down forever rethink their position. And I'm like, do I want to bring this to everyone's attention now? <clears throat> or do I want to cry wolf on the downside again? So it's like, I got to make the video and I got to make a decision. Give people a balanced view and trust you to make the decision when the number comes out. <clears throat> okay, Cardano's here at consensus. Cardano seems to have bottomed at 50 cents. Resistance is at 80. So at 80 cents, we're going to make a decision as to whether or not Cardano is any good. But Cardano could be an example of where everybody just kind of gave up. Right. Okay. Zcash. This is another interesting example, right? How is anybody going to do a transaction in the metaverse? Right. How's anybody going to do a transaction in the metaverse? If after you do the transaction, they could turn around, get your address and look at what's in your wallet. So privacy for e-commerce may matter. Does it matter today? I don't know. But the last time you had a nine bottom <clears throat> on the weekly Zcash chart, Zcash went up a lot. So what's wrong with acknowledging that? What's wrong with saying, all right, here's a signal and it should go up. And then if it goes up, fine. If it doesn't go up, that's also a signal, which brings me kind of to the end of the presentation. If there's a bullish argument, right? If everyone thinks it's going lower and instead it goes higher, right? Then that's one way to look at it. If everyone thinks it's going to go lower and it goes up and fails, then that's a message for the bears. That's your signal to go back and watch the last three or four videos, at least the first 20 minutes. So again, in sum, ETH has supported 1752. Now this, this isn't perfectly labeled, but if ETH is holding 1752, there, not, there may not be an argument <clears throat> unless it breaks 1752. So here's the conclusion. If ETH is holding 1752 and Bitcoin will not go below 30K, then you have to watch out for the squeeze or you have to watch out for the failed decline. <clears throat> In other words, if the inflation numbers come out, they're horrible. Everything goes down, but crypto comes back. That could be a signal that it's 34K. Now, the final alternative to this is to say, wow, Bill's been bearish for months and is he getting weak? 
and capitulating on the mega bearish view because no one wants to hear it. See, and traders can trade, right? They could change their mind in a minute, but analysts, you know, we have a view and it can take time to turn it around. And when everyone's ignoring you, it's tough to pound the table on the view, particularly if we've gotten to a point where people are exhausted. So that's what I'm going to leave you with, right? Don't get dogmatic. Don't say to yourself, hey, you know, <clears throat> there's only a down argument. There is an up argument. And if the up argument doesn't work, then you go back to the bigger down move. So that is the market update. All right. We appreciate you tuning in for that. All right. Now let's go to some breaking news. Let's go to some breaking news. It looks like the term ETH contagion is popping up. So <clears throat> um, liquid staking firms could default on their ETH obligation if the merge doesn't happen. Okay. So over 1 million Ether liability risks default, okay, all right, if the merge doesn't happen. Now, is this more FUD, right, or is this real risk? And we've talked about this, right? There's ETH inside the DeFi system that may get liquidated, right? That's why ETH's down only, even with the merge, right? There's, are people willing to bet that the merge goes off without a hitch, okay? Are there protocols that have ETH as collateral? I know I was on a stablecoin panel and the stablecoins have all got ETH as collateral, right? Now, ETH as a currency we think is sound. The question is, is it collateral? What is collateral? Well, it's a house. In 2008, a house was considered, oh, that's collateral? Oh, no, it's not. Now, if you put up a house in Austin as collateral, right, or a house in Los Angeles or New York, right, or on the beaches of New York or New Jersey, you know, they'll drive a dump truck cash, a dump, a, a dump truck full of cash at your house. So housing went from uh to ah. The same thing could happen with ETH on a day-by-day, week-by-week basis because, again, the FUD's out there. The FUD's out there, and the question is, will it drive the price of ETH below support? If it does, watch the last three videos. If it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe it's time to mellow out. Okay, let's talk about the Token Metrics Markets page. All right, this is a page that we have on our site and allows you to take the temperature of the market. So as you can see here, our, our, our system got us out of the way starting April 9th, and that's when I started with sell in May and go away. All right. Now, this over here, the bull and bear, this is the percentage of big cap coins that are above their 60-day moving average. So we did some statistical work, and this has been stuck at this oversold broken level for a long time. Only 8% of the coins are above their 60-day moving average. So... All along the last couple of weeks, I've been saying the biggest crashes occur when the market is deeply oversold, which is the crux of the last three videos. Obviously, right, with this thing oversold, if it was like the fear greed index, which it's not, but there's extreme fear in the markets because everything has just been crushed. So does this needle need to come back to the center before the market can make its next move, right? How long can it stay oversold before somebody says, you know what, I'll buy it, like a Michael Saylor or a hedge fund that just gobbles up everything that's out there from all the defaults. Now, can they take it all? No. If there's another fundamental catalyst, particularly one that hurts ETH, then it's going lower. But again, that's the last three videos, not this one. Okay, now one other thing we're seeing is that this yellow line is historical volatility, meaning when the market's moving a lot, the yellow line is higher. When the market's not moving at all, the yellow line goes lower. And, you know, back in July of 2021, you know, the market just kind of 
crashed and historical volatility got very low, right? And, you know, it gets very low like in January, right? After the market goes down, then the market goes sideways. And sometimes with sideways action, it can kind of breed itself. Like volatility can breed itself and so can lack of volatility. Now you're like breed itself. What does that mean? Well, meaning if it's trending and going lower, it can keep going lower, right? Right. The object in motion stays in motion. And then there's, if there's no motion, if it's just dead, it can stay dead until there's an event. Well, how many events do we need, right? DeFi contagion, dollar yen higher, interest rates up, you know, it's not affecting the crypto price. Now, if it does, we know what happens last three videos, but if it doesn't, <clears throat> What do you do? What do you do? And how bearish can you be before you start to get scared or, you know, unable to function, right? In other words, have I scared people to the point where they can't function in the market? Or am I like, am I the cause of people going, you know what? I don't want to be in crypto. anymore, And I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the analyst that helps you protect your portfolio. And hopefully you've done that, right? And if there's a huge rally, that might be an opportunity to protect your portfolio if you haven't done it already. So I'm using some of this work to suggest that there actually might be some sort of rally, even if it lasts a day, right? Now, you can see some things happening here. We have a page that tracks or a section of a page that tracks big movers on big volume, right? Frax, right? A stable coin that's really complex in terms of how it manages its collateral was actually up a lot yesterday on big volume, right? Right? Curve USDT was moving. Is that people getting out of Tether or is that people getting into Tether? I don't know. I, I would lean more towards people getting out. And decentralized social tokens, right, picked up, which may be another theme that as we head into consensus, there may be positive catalysts for certain sectors. All right. So that today is the market update. Let's sum up what we know. If the market goes down, it's going to go way down. If there's additional people that are, are failing that hold crypto, or there's additional liquidation that occurs in DeFi and in the portfolios backing stable coins, we know what happens, right? Everyone sells at the same time, right? And the bottom just falls out. And, we, and that goes on probably for 30 days. Now, if that doesn't happen, right? If, that, if that's not what happens, will there be a rally that either people can exit longs or people can get short or it just acts as a simple test, as a simple test, right? Is crypto the alternative to the turmoil in legacy, right? In other words, has legacy gotten to a point where it's so absurd? If people are running into stonks, right, to hide, then it's time for crypto. So yes, there's a case for it to go down. Yes, there's a case for it to hold, right? But the most important thing to remember is that crypto is still the future. And crypto could be the present if the legacy world detonates. Like, yeah, I guess if it all goes down in the fall, crypto is going to go with it. But I think it's time to consider, is the future of crypto now? If crypto doesn't go down, Ask yourself why. And I think the why is, is that crypto is the future. So crypto is either getting marked down with everything else, or there's something about crypto that we all need to remember, that we've all forgotten. And that is the crypto is the future because it's the alternative to a broken legacy system. So whether you fall on the bullish side or the bearish side, whether I come up with new information up or down here at consensus, whether the inflation number is good or bad, 
I think it's time to have a little bit faith in the value proposition of crypto as a whole. Manage your book, read the charts, be intellectually honest, right? That's what I'm going to do, but don't stop believing in crypto. And that's the market update for today. I'm Bill Noble. We'll see you soon.